Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining us from today for, uh, for the event. Uh, my name is Andrew Wilder. I'm the Vice President of USIP's Asia Center. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today for this important and timely discussion on the role of Central Asia, and in particular, the roles of Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan in supporting peace and stability in Afghanistan. I'd like to thank all of those who are joining online to take part in the discussion. Um, and, I, and you can ask questions through the YouTube live stream in the comments section. Uh, you can also engage with us and each other on Twitter with today's hashtag Afghan Peace. That's hashtag Afghan Peace. We would ask if you please include your name and where you're joining us from for your questions. I'd also like to offer a special word of thanks to our four esteemed guests today. We greatly appreciate your willingness to take time out of your busy schedules to join us for today's discussion. Uh, it's my real pleasure to be able to welcome Ambassador Rahmani back to USIP today, albeit virtually. Uh, we've had an excellent partnership with her and the Afghan Embassy, and I've always been impressed at how tirelessly she worked to keep us in the US informed about and engaged in Afghanistan's affairs. Uh, she is not only a very talented diplomat, but her unwavering passion for her country and its citizens has made her a very well-known and highly respected ambassador in Washington circles. So welcome. I'd also like to warmly welcome Uzbekistan's Ambassador Vahabov back to USIP virtually. Um, he, has been key, he has been a very keen dip, dynamic ambassador and articulate spokesman for reforms in Uzbekistan and an enthusiastic partner for USIP. We're also very fortunate to have Ambassador Kazihanov with us today. He's not only a very seasoned diplomat, having previously served as Kazakhstan's foreign minister, but has also played an important role in helping to create Kazakhstan's foreign assistance agency, KazAid, to support stability in the region, and in particular in Afghanistan. So very relevant to today's discussion. And last but certainly not least, I'm very pleased to be able to welcome back to USIP the U.S. Special Representative for Afghanistan Reconciliation, Ambassador Khalilzad. Uh, Ambassador Khalilzad has worked tirelessly since his appointment in September 2018 to support a peace process that we all hope will result in a politically negotiated end to over four decades of war and suffering in Afghanistan. So thanks again to all of you for taking the time to join us today. As many as you, of you know, USIP was founded by the US Congress 35 years ago as an independent, nonpartisan national institute charged with the vital mission of preventing, mitigating, and resolving violent conflict. USIP has been involved in Afghanistan since 2002 uh, and, and supporting a sustainable and inclusive peace process in Afghanistan remains one of USIP's highest priority programs. Through our teams based in Afghanistan and in our DC headquarters, we support a range of programmatic activities, provide advice to policymakers, and conduct research and analysis, uh, much of which you can access from USIP's website. In addition to our work in Afghanistan, USIP has been providing grants to organizations working to prevent, mitigate, and resolve violent conflict in Central Asia since 2003. Over the past few years, USIP has expanded our Central Asia program in partnership with the U.S. State Department's C5 Plus One initiative. This initiative provides a platform to convene government stakeholders, experts, and civil society lead leaders from the five Central, states, Central Asian states plus the U.S. to share and promote best practices and approaches to countering and preventing violent extremism. I had the pleasure last October to attend the most recent CVE consultative working group in Samarkand, along with USIP's president, Nancy Limborg. Um, I enjoyed the opportunity to engage with government leaders and, on current trends and best practices for CV, CVE policy, uh, not to mention the opportunity to visit the spectacular sites of Samarkand and Bukhara. Today's discussion comes at a critical but high, and highly uncertain time for the Afghanistan peace process. While there is great hope that talks will begin soon between the Afghan government and the Taliban, there are still hurdles to overcome, including unacceptably, unacceptably high acts of violence uh, and a dispute over prisoner releases between the Afghan government and the Taliban. 
Even if intra-Afghan negotiations do move forward, a successful political settlement and sustainable peace in Afghanistan will not be possible without strong regional support and consensus. While Afghanistan's eastern and western neighbors tend to draw the most headlines, its northern neighbors are linked together by robust historical and cultural ties. A peaceful Afghanistan would open opportunities for enhanced regional connectivity. As President Ashraf Ghani has noted, Afghanistan can serve as the key regional trade roundabout for Asia, linking South and Central Asia in mutual prosperity. The format for today's event is to have each ambassador provide brief opening remarks, which will be followed by a moderated discussion and will end with a question and answer session with the online audience. With that, let me thank our online audience and panelists once again uh, and turn things over to the moderator of today's discussion, Scott Warden, who is the director of USIP's Afghanistan and Central Asia programs. Uh, and a big thanks to Scott for taking time off from his family holiday to join us this morning. So over to you, Scott. Thank you, Andrew, and good morning, everyone. It's also my pleasure to be part of this event with four distinguished ambassadors. I want to also reiterate Andrew's remarks that in all of the discussions about difficulties and challenges facing the Afghan peace process, I think this will be a discussion that has uh, a more positive and promising prospect because the support that Afghanistan's northern neighbors have given to Afghanistan over years of conflict can hopefully be uh, a source of support going forward. Without further ado, let me turn over to Ambassador Rahmani to give remarks, and then I will lead a moderated discussion after all four ambassadors speak. Ambassador Rahmani, the floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum, may peace be upon you. I would repeat what Mr. Wilder said. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on wherever you are. It's a great pleasure to join Ambassador Javlan Vakavov, Ambassador Arjan Kazakhanov, and Ambassador Khalilza to discuss how we can continue to unlock the enormous potential for peace and prosperity in the region. I want to thank the US. Institute of Peace for organizing this important discussion. I want to thank Mr. Wilder for his opening remarks and Mr. Warden for steering us throughout uh, this session. Afghanistan and Central Asia constituted an important segment of the Great Silk Road, connecting Central Asia to Alert South from Asia backup sale. and behind. Through, through which people, ideas, goods, and knowledge, and cultures flow. Our shared history and cultural heritage is a testament to that. Ibn Sina, the father of the early medicine, came from Afghanistan and lived in Bukhara, while Al-Biruni, the father of comparative religion, and the first anthropologist came from Uzbekistan, but mostly lived in Ghazni province of Afghanistan. However, our shared history and cultural heritage did not keep us sufficiently connected. And today, Central Asia and South Asia are among the least integrated regions in the world. But fortunately, opportunities for collaboration are abandoned. And we recognize that our economic development, security, and futures are tied together. We need policies and relationships reflective to that. Intra-regional trade could be dramatically expanded. One way to address this is by implementing what's already in the paper. For example, one key barrier is the cost and time of cross-border intra-regional trade. Fully implementation uh, of the WTO Trade Facilitation Agreement could be extremely beneficial for addressing this issue in this region and beyond. The TIR convention is another great instrument. Furthermore, we can help exporters access markets by, re by reducing tariffs, easing the process of obtaining business visas and help better facilitate banking trans transactions. 
infrastructure development is at the core of regional cooperation. Central Asian governments are already collaborating on the Lapis Lazuli Corridor, progressing the Digital CASA project, and working on the Central Asia Regional Economic Cooperation Program with uh, ADB focusing on electricity, railways, and roads. Afghanistan and Uzbekistan are now connected by rail and have daily services, which has been key during the pandemic. Afghanistan was able to ship goods all the way to China through Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan because of this connection. But this is not all. We have so many opportunities to help, uh, each, to help each other grow. We just need to take advantage of the opportunities in front of us, whether they are in electricity, gas, fiber optics, or scaling up our agricultural products by combining them. Independently, we produce exports on a small scale, which makes it difficult for us to compete on the world stage. Despite having a comparative advantage on both agricultural products and natural resources. If we combine our outputs, we would all be more competitive. Furthermore, we need to work collaboratively to make our borders both more secure and more efficient. We need to streamline customs and make it easier for legitimate actors, such as business people and tourists to pass through. Similarly, we need to increase our intelligence sharing and improve our coordination on security matters. These are not all new ideas, but things we need to continue to work on. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We need to cement the foundations that we, already, we have already established. The Afghan people need their Central Asian neighbors to support Afghanistan's peace process with their consensus and commitment to a stable, peaceful, and free Afghanistan. That's reflective of its people's dreams and aspirations. An Afghanistan that continues to cherish the achievements of its past two decades and builds on them. And an Afghanistan that works with all its neighbors and allies with openness and constructiveness. These values are also key to retaining foreign investment. Terms like free and open are at the core of the lexicon of all US policies, be it domestic or international. This is reflected in the US national security strategy in Central Asia. In order to maintain the support of our allies and build a durable peace we must fearlessly protect our democratic values. As we pursue a more integrated future, we need to keep in mind the nexus between poverty and conflict. Poverty does not always cause conflict or turn young men into terrorists, but it does create an environment in which increasing number of people have virtually no opportunity costs. Extremism grows where there is no hope. As countries with large youth populations, we need to reach out to our young people with opportunities and show them the hope for a better future. Today, more than ever, we must prioritize strengthening regional economic cooperation, which will play a critical role in providing socioeconomic and security benefit for the entire region. A peace deal may plant the seeds of peace, but development and regional cooperation are what makes peace grow. It makes economic develop development and trust in the future to encourage people to truly invest in peace. Peace and development are interdependent. Without peace, there is no development, and without development, there is no peace. Over the past few decades, we have keenly felt the opportunity cost and risks involved in not pursuing greater integration. Increased integration is mutually beneficial for all parties and will allow us to keep, us, to keep up 
with the rest of the world as people move and the world develops and changes. To sum up, in order to get up to speed, our countries need to harmonize regulation and remove barriers for trade and investment so that investors can look at the region collectively and invest with more ease. This would reduce corruption and make trade flow, which both boosts opportunity for us and make us more attractive to foreign direct investors. It's clear to me that the path to peace includes deepening integration with our neighbors and partners. Not only do we have a shared rich past, but we have an intertwined future. Now we need to align our vision and efforts to maximize the potential for our future. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, it isn't enough to talk about peace. We must believe in it. And it isn't enough to believe in it. We must work at it. Let's go, let's get to work together. I thank you all. Thank you very much, Ambassador Rahmani, for those remarks. Let me pass over to Ambassador Bahaba. The floor is yours. So dear uh, Dr. Wilder, Mr. Warden, uh, my fellow ambassadors, it gives me a great pleasure to speak about to, to speak today about Uzbekistan's role in uh, facilitating peace and stability, uh, economic recovery, and greater resilience in Afghanistan uh, when this uh, country, despite many challenges, is on the cusp of a historic peace. And as uh, never before, it is a high time for inclusive and uh, unified uh, government of Afghanistan and the Taliban uh, to overcome their differences, seize the opportunity and achieve long-deserved sustainable peace. And Uzbekistan is standing ready to support brotherly Afghanistan on this path. You know well, over the decades, Uzbekistan has been trying to promote peace in Afghanistan being at the forefront uh, with several initiatives including establishment in 1997 of the contact group 6 plus 2 that was later transformed to 6 plus 3 format with participation of the six neighboring countries to Afghanistan plus major powers and NATO, all aimed at peaceful resolution of the Afghan conflict. However, new momentum in this process uh, has been gained uh, after high-level international conference on Afghanistan, which took place uh, on the initiative of President Shavkat Mirziyoyev in March 2018 in Tashkent. Indeed, uh, it was uh, not uh, a one-time event. It became a breakthrough uh, in the quest uh, for ways of the uh, Afghan settlement. Tashkent declaration adopted at the conference became a certain peace program for Afghanistan with a set of principles for peace and uh, reconciliation, countering terrorism and economic reconstruction, all recognized uh, by the international community. It was at the Tashkin conference uh, where international community became united with a uh, cornerstone uh, approach to promote direct negotiations between the Afghan government and the Taliban without preconditions. And in order to implement the Tashkin declaration uh, in close coordination with Kabul, Uzbekistan has several rounds of negotiations with the leaders of the main Afghan internal political force, forces, as well as Taliban representatives, in order to better understand their position and seek compromises. And moreover, we have maintained a continuous dialogue with the United States, Russia, China, Pakistan, Iran, India, and other countries of the region, as well as with key states of the Muslim world, on the issue of Afghan settlement. And promoting the uh, Afghanistan peace process and supporting the goal of a durable political settlement was also a part of uh, the agenda of inaugural US-Afghanistan-Uzbekistan trilateral meeting co-chaired by Under Secretary David Hale, Foreign Minister of Afghanistan Mohammad Hanif Atmar, and Foreign Minister of Uzbekistan Abdulaziz Kamilov on May 27th that led 
to establishing working groups on economy, security, and political cooperation. In order to achieve uh, sustainable and long-term uh, peace uh, in Afghanistan, we deem it necessary to hold on to key principles of political settlement above all, abstention from violence, comprehensive ceasefire, readiness to dialogue and compromises. As President Shavkat Mirziyoyev has uh, underscored, secure Afghanistan means secure Uzbekistan, prosperous and stable South and Central Asia. And we remain uh, committed to do our utmost uh, in order to ensure the success of peace talks in Afghanistan. We are standing ready to provide a platform for uh, direct, inclusive negotiations. And along with uh, the peace process, uh, we understand uh, the significance uh, of investing into economic sustainability, social stability of Afghanistan, and educating young generation of Afghans. We stopped uh, looking at Afghanistan as a source of uh, problems, headaches, and uh, realizing that, the, that uh, the country presents a unique opportunity for uh, the entire Central Asia to have the shortest access uh, to seaports uh, and uh, energy uh, markets in South Asia. We would like to uh, see Afghanistan as uh, well integrated into Central Asian economic process. And we cannot stress enough how it is important. Afghanistan is already a top 10 trading partner of Uzbekistan with trade turnover amounted to more than $600 million in 2019, almost 30% increase compared with 2016. These volumes are expected uh, to increase up to one and a half billion dollars in the years to come. And given uh, the increased <clears throat> challenges brought on uh, by the COVID-19 pandemic, so maintaining un uninterrupted supply of food commodities and essential medicine has become crucial as never before. Uzbekistan has, has provided humanitarian aid with vitally important food commodities and PPP, PPE to neighboring Afghanistan amid pandemic. And during the visit uh, of uh, Ambassador uh, Halil Zad, uh, whom I'm very glad to see uh, today, and DFC CEO Adam Boyle to Uzbekistan on late uh, June, we have uh, explored uh, opportunities for DFC's uh, engagement in a number of Uzbekistan infrastructure projects contributing to expansion uh, of uh, economic relations and uh, connectivity between Afghanistan and Central Asia. And I would like uh, to particularly welcome uh, the DFC's willingness uh, to support uh, establishing the Regional Investment Fund with uh, all Central Asian uh, countries, as well as Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan, and India, aimed at uh, improving uh, infrastructure development and regional connectivity. One of the most important projects uh, uh, that uh, my fellow ambassador of Afghanistan has mentioned is the construction of a railway from mazar sharif to Kabul uh, that could uh, subsequently be extended eastwards uh, to Pakistan, city of Peshawar, with uh, further access uh, to the ports of Gwadar and Karachi. And uh, along uh, with uh, shortest access uh, to the ports of the Indian Ocean and Persian Gulf, uh, it also creates thousands of new jobs for uh, Afghan citizens, providing transit revenues and increased trade turnover. In order to facilitate trade and transit of goods in 2016, we have established a logistics center in the thousand part of Uzbekistan, Termas Cargo, with cargo servicing capacity of 70 containers per day that provides a complex of uh, transport and uh, logistics services for customs clearance, uh, cargo handling, terminal warehousing, intermodal transportation to and from Afghanistan. And during the trilateral meeting on May, we uh, also agreed uh, to promote trade through uh, the development of the free economic zone at the Termas border crossing. For over 15 years, Uzbekistan has uh, been a reliable partner of Kabul in the field of electricity supply. Uh, so compared, to, compared with uh, 2002, the volume of uh, electricity supplies to Afghanistan increased by 30 times. And effective uh, from January uh, 2018, Uzbekistan reduced the price of electricity supply to, Afga uh, to Afghanistan by 45% 
to 5 cents per kilowatt. Uzbekistan has also started to uh, started the construction of uh, 500 kilowatts of current polycom repower transmission line in Afghanistan. After its completion, so uh, Uzbekistan will be able to increase uh, the electricity supply to Afghanistan by 70% up to 6 billion kilowatt uh, hours per, uh, per year. The implementation of this uh, project will uh, provide opportunities to increase the production capacity and create, of course, new jobs in Afghanistan. Moreover, it can become an integral part of the CASA 1000 project, connecting uh, Kabul uh, to the uh, unified energy system of the entire Central Asia. So another vital project is the use of the uh, potential of the educational center in Termas uh, to train Afghan uh, specialists. Currently, the center is successfully operating with 170 Afghan students, including women, uh, training them based on skill-oriented programs. In the future, we are planning to increase this uh, number, uh, I mean, the number of students um, up to uh, 250. So joint efforts uh, to implement these and other infrastructure projects facilitating cross-border uh, trade uh, and agriculture for greater food security, cooperation in the field of health and uh, pharmaceutical supplies uh, to address the challenges of COVID-19, as well as uh, support of uh, women's uh, economic empowerment within the US uh, government-led uh, WGDP initiative uh, were discussed during US, uh, Afghanistan, uh, Uzbekistan trilateral economic working group meeting this Tuesday. And we look forward uh, to a practical implementation of a uh, defined uh, roadmap. To conclude, uh, I would like to stress uh, that uh, without peace uh, in uh, brother Afghanistan, we will never reach prosperity in the region, in the region of Central Asia. The prospects of sustainable development in Central Asia are inextricably linked uh, with the achievement of peace uh, in neighboring Afghanistan. So the biggest solution is the comprehensive support in terms of uh, Afghanistan's integration into regional economic processes. And uh, my country has uh, been and will continue to support the peace process, actively engage in the economic reconstruction of Afghanistan, facilitate the development of transport uh, and uh, energy infrastructure and train the people to the best of our knowledge. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And let us move now directly to Ambassador Kazakhano. Well, thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, I'm delighted to join our good friends and colleagues. And I hope uh, you and your families are staying safe during these difficult times. And I would like to thank the International Peace Institute for providing uh, its platform to facilitate our exchange of views and uh, informative discussion. And I would also like to take this opportunity and welcome my colleague ambassadors, Ambassador of Afghanistan, Ambassador of Uzbekistan, and Ambassador Halilzad. Uh, Speaking about uh, the topic under consideration, I would like to start by saying that uh, for the past uh, 20 years, Kazakhstan has been actively involved in promoting peace and stability in Afghanistan through its tireless efforts across the whole spectrum of areas, including assistance to national security forces, infrastructure development, food security, education, empowerment of women, and many more. Representing Central Asia in the United Nations Security Council as a non-permanent member in 2018, Kazakhstan sponsored a high-level debate on building regional partnership in Afghanistan and Central Asia as a model to link security and development. As you recall, we also led United Nations Security Council visit to Kabul in January 2018. My country proposed to create a model zone of peace, security, and cooperation in Central Asia to transform the landlocked region into land-linked one by connecting it to neighboring regions through trade, transit, transportation, and energy exchange, including Afghanistan. 
it is our principal position that Afghanistan should be viewed not as a threat, but as an important and high potential partner. Recently, President of Kazakhstan, Tokayev, appointed one of the seasoned Kazakh diplomats, Talgat Khalif, as a special envoy for Afghanistan. We welcome signing of the agreement for bringing peace to Afghanistan in Doha in February 2020 and looking forward to its successful implementation and formation of inclusive Afghan government. I would like to take this opportunity and highly commend the tireless efforts of Ambassador Halilzad, and uh, uh, I'm sure that you've been doing a great job and you have the full support from Kazakhstan. Uh, Kazakhstan is ready to make a substantial input into the peace building process in Afghanistan. We believe that Central Asian countries can play a pivotal role in providing a solid basis for the inter Afghan talks. Kazakhstan believes that uh, security and development are closely interrelated. We recognize and strengthen the security development nexus. In that regard, we are confident that the projects pursued by Central Asian countries with Kabul will support and contribute to peace and stability in Afghanistan. In other words, security and development today have an aspect that is more regional than country specific and therefore requires regional approach. Over the last years, Kazakhstan allocated 6 million US dollars to assist Afghan national security forces and provides smooth functioning of the Northern Distribution Network. It is important to advance regional cooperation to counter illicit drug trafficking. In this slide, would like to draw your attention to the Central Asian Regional Information and Coordination Center operating under the auspices of UNDC in Almaty that plays an integral part in these efforts. With, this, with its immense potential, its favorable geography and considerable human capital, Afghanistan could and should be seen as a strong partner to join economic projects. Once reaching stability and sustainable growth, Afghanistan should become an important bridge connecting Central Asia with enormous market of South Asia and beyond. We support expanding our economic cooperation with this country, as well as support Kabul's membership at a trade and investment framework agreement between the United States and Central Asia. Strong and peaceful Afghanistan is a good neighbor of Central Asia, will have, will have a great positive impact on our region. To date, Kazakhstan provided more than 80 million US dollars worth of assistance to Afghanistan. My country has participated in the construction of critical social and transport infrastructure in Afghanistan. We are interested in supporting new projects and enhancing our trade cooperation with Kabul. We also call on the donor community to increase its contribution to peace and development in and around Afghanistan. Kazakhstan is working to create a United Nations-led regional hub in Almaty designed to help deliver coordinated support for the implementation of sustainable development goals to the countries of the whole region. Our flagship education program trained more than 1,000 Afghan students in Kazakhstan's universities. In 2018, Kazakhstan hosted a first regional conference on, empowerment, on empowering women in Afghanistan, and we have its direct outcomes, the education program for Afghan women in the universities of Kazakhstan. This is very much in line with the US Women Global Development Prosperity Initiative. We would like to join our hands to promote long-term economic resilience, 
by encouraging and promoting full participation and empowerment of women. Currently, Kazakhstan implementing EU and UNDP sponsored uh, program on vocational education for Afghan girls. The scholarship will last for two years, whereby students will have a chance to live and study in our southern capital, the city of Almaty. This year, in light of COVID-19, Kazakhstan delivered significant amount of food products as our humanitarian aid to Afghanistan. And to conclude, I would like to say that being the biggest economy in the region, Kazakhstan is undertaking every effort to assist global and regional development that remains an essential element of the country's foreign and economic policy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And finally, let me pass the microphone to Ambassador Khalilzad. Well, uh, thank you very much, Scott. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back with USIP and it's a great honor uh, to be with uh, the distinguished ambassadors that have already spoken, the ambassador of Afghanistan, the ambassador of Uzbekistan and the ambassador of Kazakhstan. Uh, outstanding statements have been made uh, by the three uh, distinguished ambassadors. I would like to reflect on what has been said and make four points. Uh, point one, uh, this is an important moment for Afghanistan and for the region. Perhaps a defining moment. Uh, 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 second, uh, that what happens in Afghanistan uh, will have a significant impact for the region. And what the region does will have an important impact on Afghanistan. Uh, this is a moment for peace to be pursued in Afghanistan and for development, stability, and trade and integration that that peace can facilitate. And third, that the United States has been active on both tracks the track of peace in Afghanistan and the track of regional integration, regional trade, uh, developing a common vision, if you like, for regional de development, security, and prosperity between Central Asian countries and Afghanistan and between Afghanistan and South Asia, starting with Pakistan, in the hope that ultimately over time, Afghanistan can bring uh, the uh, Central Asian nations and South Asian nations together for a, uh, the common and glorious uh, objective of a peaceful, prosperous, and stable region. Let me uh, say uh, that we are very much committed to doing our part, the United States, in achieving both objectives. Uh, the objective of peace and the objective of regional development and cooperation that is needed to sustain if there is a peace agreement among Afghans and then to achieve the benefits or to uh, uh, make progress on achieving the potential benefit that, that, and the opportunities that that peace can provide. With regarding peace in Afghanistan, uh, why do I say this is a, 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 a perhaps a defining moment? Um, as several of you have said, Afghanistan has never been closer uh, to an Afghan-owned, Afghan-led peace process defined as negotiations between the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan negotiating team and the Taliban. The war in Afghanistan has been an obstacle the potential that we have talked about. It has been a huge burden on the people of Afghanistan who are yearning for peace. And it has been a burden on the international community, uh, especially the United States. Uh, with the agreement signed between the United States and the Taliban, the next step is inter-Afghan negotiations. Uh, 
two issues stand in the way. Uh, one is the issue of prisoners that have been agreed to be released or exchanged uh, between the Taliban and the government of Afghanistan. Uh, I please uh, that as of now, the Afghan government has released more than 4,400 according to its own uh, numbers out of 5,000 that has been the goal. And the Taliban have released uh, in turn from the objective of 1,000 prisoners, 861. Uh, um, most of the distance has been traveled in this difficult uh, uh, road, uh, but the last mile remains very challenging. And uh, we are committed very much uh, with working with the Afghan government uh, and with the Taliban uh, to uh, get to the objective of satisfying the concerns with regard to the prison release as a confidence building measure, the prisoners exchange, so that inter-Afghan negotiations can start. The second issue has been the issue of violence and that violence has been too high. Uh, we are working with uh, both the government uh, of Afghanistan, as well as with the Taliban, uh, to uh, encourage a reduction of violence by all sides. Too many Afghans are dying. Uh, we are also delivering on our commitment to the Afghan government and to the Afghan security forces. And consistent with the agreement that we have signed uh, with the Taliban uh, to come to the defense of the Afghan security forces, when they are attacked and to continue as uh, described in the joint statement that was issued on the same day that we signed the agreement with the Taliban and uh, the, the commitment that we made uh, with Afghanistan uh, restating our principal goals and commitments uh, to the people and the government of Afghanistan. Uh, I'm hoping that, uh, that uh, we, as we move closer to inter-Afghan negotiations, which I hope will happen uh, in the coming weeks, and that violence uh, will be less than it is now, although currently uh, this year so far, the number of Afghan security forces killed is uh, between 35 and 40% less uh, than last year for the same period. And the number of civilians uh, uh, killed is also significantly lower for the same period uh, uh, compared to last year. Uh, of course, we're pleased that since the agreement was signed, uh, that no American or coalition soldier has been killed uh, by the Taliban in Afghanistan. But although what I described in terms of decreased levels is significant, we're not satisfied. We want uh, further reductions. Second issue uh, is the issue of the region and the role of the region with regard to the peace process. I'm grateful to the, uh, for the support that our effort uh, has had from uh, friendly countries, partner countries of uh, Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. Uh, we believe that uh, these countries have an important role to play in encouraging the uh, Afghan sides, the government and the Taliban to overcome the challenge of uh, uh, that remain, the challenge of violence and uh, prisoners, and then to uh, facilitate once center Afghan negotiations begin to help encourage compromises on an agreement on a political roadmap that ends the Afghan war, that there is an agreement on a permanent ceasefire and a political uh, formula. Uh, for for uh, uh, ending the suffering of the Afghan people. And then subsequently, once an agreement is reached to help sustain that agreement uh, uh, by uh, encouraging implementation of the agreement uh, by the side that make the agreement and then to sustain it. And on sustainment, I come to my third point, which is uh, the issue of development uh, that uh, peace facilitates, as um, the ambassador of Afghanistan said so eloquently, Peace uh, uh, opens the opportunity to for further economic development uh, that needs to be taken advantage of, but at the same time that peace uh, 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 for peace to be sustained, economic development is also 
not only important, but perhaps necessary. And on, on that point, uh, uh, the, uh, I, I would like to say that uh, we have developed, uh, already a lot has happened between Afghanistan and uh, Central Asia and between Afghanistan and Pakistan, but we are encouraging more. Uh, uh, we have established, uh, as, I was, as was described, uh, a trilateral with Uzbekistan, including Afghanistan, we're about to start a trilateral with Afghanistan, with Tajikistan. We are working on an agreement between Afghanistan and Pakistan with uh, uh, support uh, from our British colleagues, uh, all as parallel uh, and uh, uh, related and in support of uh, the peace process, but also being preparing for uh, broadening and deepening uh, economic ties, trade, and cooperation, so that uh, uh, during the period of getting to peace, but also if there is an agreement on peace during the implementation, uh, there is uh, steps in place uh, for uh, uh, taking advantage of that peace uh, for the well-being of the people of the region, for uh, uh, greater uh, trade in goods and services, uh, and in investment uh, opportunities that would become available. Last point, um, although big decisions are uh, to be made by the leaders of the region, uh, which will have significant consequences, decisions that are gonna be uh, um, faced, uh, uh, challenges that will have to be overcome, uh, the United States will do its part, I want to assure uh, you all that we will do our part both uh, to get to peace and then to uh, to achieve the great potential for economic cooperation and economic prosperity that exists we want a unified democratic peaceful afghanistan uh, that is at peace with itself and with the region and we want a region that is more integrated more developed and more, more cooperative uh, with each other to achieve the great potential. And we'd like to see uh, a friendly relationship between the United States, close cooperation between the United States and Afghanistan and the region, uh, including uh, ultimately Central Asia, Afghanistan and South Asia uh, as uh, uh, for the future as well-being of the people of the region and also uh, for the well-being of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Khalilzad, and, and to all of the speakers for really comprehensive and, and thorough rem remarks. I want to, uh, I'll ask a few questions now. I will note that you can, people that are viewing this live can ask questions on the YouTube chat feature, and they can also join the discussion via Twitter on hashtag Afghan Peace. My first question is noting that there's a strong common theme among all of the presentations about the economic opportunity that greater integration of Afghanistan with Central Asia in a peaceful environment can bring. Uh, there's a debate in, in all peace processes is what are the incentives uh, to bring the parties uh, to agreement and to overcome spoilers to peace. And while the economic realities and benefits seem clear, uh, they have not been enough so far to achieve breakthroughs. And my question is, given the opportunities that are discussed here today, how can those be packaged, communicated, used as an incentive to the parties that are delaying the peace process, whether that is uh, parties within Afghanistan or outside of Afghanistan? So how can these economic opportunities be inserted into the peace process so they really act as pressure on different parties to come to an agreement? Let me ask you first, Ambassador Khalilzad, and then ideas from the other ambassadors. I think you may be on mute. Uh, thank you, Scott. Uh, of course, the primary motivation uh, for peace uh, in Afghanistan is the desire of the Afghan people uh, for peace, the costs of war, 
uh, and uh, the length of time that the war has taken, war weariness uh, by the parties, and I believe that the economic incentives can be an additional uh, factor. And that's why uh, recognizing the opportunities that are there, the great potential that exists in Afghanistan itself, uh, the Afghanistan's GNP, for example, right now is something like 19 billion plus uh, dollars. It can easily uh, uh, be one and a half times that and more over time. There are great resources uh, that uh, can be developed. There is great potential in connectivity and trade that can be achieved. But what stands in the way is uh, of achieving all the potential as, as quickly as it's possible is uh, the conflict. That projects, some of which have been committed to in terms of developing the country's resources have not been implemented uh, uh, even by foreign investors because of the, uh, uh, in part because of the conflict. And the Taliban also on the other side uh, 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 have access to some resources, uh, 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 but those are, if you compare them in terms of numbers are quite limited. So uh, that's why I took uh, uh, Mr. Bowler with me on the last trip to, uh, uh, see, uh, talk with the President Ghani, who has a great vision for the, uh, the future of the, uh, not only Afghanistan economically, but also for the, for the region in terms of connectivity and, and trade, uh, to uh, talk to him, talk to Dr. Abdullah, uh, as a, uh, who has the responsibility for peace, and to the Taliban. And I have to say that, that the, those conversations are very, uh, very interesting and very useful. And we did it similarly uh, in the region because we are willing to invest not only ourselves, but with partner countries. Uh, uh, the ambassador of Uzbekistan talked about the regional fund, but we've talked to the uh, countries of the Gulf. We've, we are talking with others. Uh, we're spending $38 billion now for uh, the military effort in Afghanistan. Uh, others are spending money uh, on the uh, military effort. Imagine if a portion of that, uh, because if we could save that because of a peace, is invested in economic development uh, and the opportunities that exist. Uh, uh, so uh, we are uh, we are doing uh, Scott uh, uh, our part. I'm sure we're just starting. More can be done and and and. Uh, uh, more will be done in cooperation with others in the coming weeks. Thank you. Let me ask if Ambassador Rahmani would like to uh, give her response or other ideas on how the positive uh, benefits of greater uh, economic integration can be directly applied. Thank you. Uh, uh, building on the ideas that Ambassador Khalilzad mentioned, I would also say that in order to stop this vicious cycle, we need to take some bold steps. Uh, we are catch in uh, this vicious cycle of insecurity, and therefore there is no development. And because there is no development, insecurity continues. As long as the cost of war uh, is too low, uh, and as I understand, with $60 million, you can continue the war in Afghanistan. And it is too low. So the, uh, we need to bring the benefits of peace high enough in order to stop and break out of this cycle. I again say we need some bold steps. Bold steps that given the, still the situation we are in, in order to break through, we need to work together and invest in uh, regional cooperation and economic development to get those people that out of poverty and uh, lack of opportunities turn to violence uh, to uh, prevent them from turning to violence. And so I think that <clears throat> we need to bring the price of peace lower than the price 
uh, uh, for uh, the, the, the benefits of war. Otherwise, this is going to unfortunately continue and we will be stuck in this vicious cycle. Uh, we need some practical um, steps to be taken. We have done a lot in terms of the meetings. We have great uh, agreements in place. We have uh, uh, made the uh, memorandums of understandings with all our partners but uh, in terms of the uh, practical steps i think we are uh, falling quite short and therefore we need to uh, just ramp up those efforts thank you thank you very much let me turn to ambassador bakaba you mentioned the tashkent conference and you mentioned uzbekistan's active diplomacy in trying to facilitate political agreement between the Afghan parties. Uh, you know, related to the discussion we've just been having, are there more specific ways that you think Uzbekistan or potentially your, your neighbors can incentivize the different parties for obstacles to a peace process? So, Thank you so much for this question. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we uh, are very optimistic about the uh, prospects of the peace talks uh, and hope uh, that uh, inclusive uh, intra-Afghan uh, negotiations uh, will lead uh, to finding compromises between all parties involved. And we hope, uh, still hope, uh, the formation of a High Council uh, for National Reconciliation will be completed soon. And uh, it uh, will start working with uh, Taliban towards peace, uh, reconciliation and uh, national unity. So we uh, are also confident that the reduction in violence uh, leading to a ceasefire would save lives. Thousands of lives creates a more conducive environment uh, to begin uh, intra-Afghan peace uh, negotiations and uh, enable the government uh, to focus on addressing uh, challenges posed uh, by uh, COVID-19. So we are firm believers uh, that intra-Afghan talks uh, should reflect the best uh, interests of all Afghan people and uh, efforts uh, pertaining uh, to the peace process uh, should not erode uh, the fundamental rights uh, guaranteed uh, so by the constitution and, uh, and international law. And uh, here I would like also uh, to, to um, underscore that um, our offer to conduct intra-Afghan peace talks uh, in Samarkand is, is still stand. Uh, we uh, are ready to create all the ne necessary conditions uh, for uh, direct negotiations between the government of uh, Afghanistan and the Taliban. Uh, and so in this uh, context, uh, Uzbekistan uh, already had experience in, in, in handling uh, conflict uh, settlement. Uh, we demonstrated uh, real politics uh, through uh, facilitating uh, the settlement of the inter tajik conflict in 1997. And for 25 years, uh, border and water issues with uh, our neighbors uh, have remained in limbo. And thanks uh, to to a new regional approach uh, by President Mirziyoyev, uh, thanks to his neighbor's first policy. Uh, a, comp a compromise uh, was reached over, the, uh, over all sensitive issues. So uh, due to these reasons, we, we, we uh, are confident that uh, a long-awaited peace and stability in Afghanistan uh, could be definitely achieved. Thank you very much. I want to ask a question from the audience, and this is from Wally Frozan, and he asks, what are the chances of a full withdrawal of U.S. troops in the near future? So I'll turn to Ambassador Khalilzad first on that, but I want to broaden the question uh, and to include others as well, and that is about the broader issue of a U.S. troop presence and what it means for geopolitics of the region, because Certainly the U.S. troop presence has been a stabilizing force in some ways, and it is one of the key objectives of the Taliban uh, in order to continue with negotiations. Russia and China also have interests and concerns regarding the U.S. troop presence and have interests in Central Asia. And so first to Ambassador Khalilzad, if you want to say 
anything about the trajectory of U.S. troops. But for the other ambassadors, let me turn to you after that and ask, how do you see uh, the specific issue of U.S. troops affecting uh, greater regional politics? Oh, thank you, Scott. Uh, and th thank you to the questioner. Uh, as uh, the, uh, you all know, uh, we have agreed in the uh, agreement that we have signed uh, with the Taliban uh, that uh, assuming conditions uh, that uh, those troops are not necessary, our troops are not necessary to be in Afghanistan, uh, the United States would like to bring its troops home. And the same is true of our coalition partners. And we have a timetable uh, for withdrawal of those forces. But uh, the withdrawal is very much condition based. Uh, and so uh, 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 at this point, uh, we have uh, uh, finished the first phase of uh, the withdrawal of US forces uh, to bringing them down to 8,600. Uh, we are in phase two uh, now. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll see whether the Taliban uh, honor their commitments uh, because our decisions, our commitments are contingent on uh, their commitment and the agreement has uh, four elements, uh, the element of counterterrorism, uh, 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 the element of withdrawal, of course, and then the element of inter-Afghan negotiations and an agreement on a comprehensive permanent ceasefire. Uh, 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 we do not seek uh, presence in Afghanistan, a military presence as an end in itself. It will be, it'll be uh, uh, determined uh, uh, by the conditions, and I have described them. Let me say a word on uh, the perspective of others, uh, both China and Russia and others have expressed uh, the, the support for this uh, approach. Uh, and the UN Security Council endorsed, uh, uh, as you know, the uh, uh, US Taliban agreement uh, and the Afghan government uh, uh, in the joint statement uh, that we issued on the same day also embraces the same, uh, and the same perspective, the same uh, uh, element. So that's where we are, that's our approach and uh, we uh, uh, we, we are uh, on course uh, uh, with, with that approach. Thank you. Ambassador Kazakhanov, maybe I can turn to you with this question. If you have thoughts on, on U.S. troop presence and how that affects the region, but also more broadly uh, with Central Asia being in between Russia and China and with the significant U.S. presence through our Afghanistan engagement, how do you see the evolving uh, geostrategic picture going along with Afghan peace negotiations. Well, thank you very much, Scott. Uh, I would be very brief. Uh, it's obvious that security and stability in Afghanistan plays an important role for Central Asia. And we know that uh, the U.S. Uh, have decreased the number of U.S. troops, military personnel in Afghanistan. And uh, in this regard, uh, we hope that uh, the United States will ensure safe and responsible drawdown of troops and will not commit a security vacuum in Afghanistan. That will be my answer. Thank you very much. Let me take another question from Richard Hoagland, a uh, former U.S. official in the region. And he asks about the C5 plus one. So this is the uh, cooperation project of the US and the five Central Asian former Soviet republics. Uh, can that be expanded to Afghanistan is the question. And I would amplify that by saying, you know, to what extent does Afghanistan uh, play a role in helping the broader Central Asian region uh, in, improve communications, trade, and cultural exchange. Let me ask Ambassador Bahabov to speak to that first. I think you may be muted. So before I uh, turn uh, 
to, to <clears throat> answering this question, just uh, wanted to, to make uh, some comments uh, regarding the uh, US troops withdrawal from Afghanistan. So in, in our understanding, so the presence of uh, US troops in Afghanistan, so has been uh, ensuring in uh, many uh, dimensions overall security in the region of Central Asia for many years. And how, however, uh, considering the uh, importance of achieving sustainable peace in Afghanistan, ensuring regional and, uh, uh, and international security, the troop withdrawal, uh, the coalition troops withdrawal, in our views, uh, should be done with a due regard uh, for the progress of achieving peace and all aspects of its sustainability. So with respect to the uh, question <clears throat> uh, so uh, addressed by Ambassador Hoagland, uh, so I'm uh, very pleased uh, uh, to let you know that um, the, the, the trilateral uh, cooperation format that the United States was based in Afghanistan uh, that, um, uh, that was launched just a few months ago and uh, held its first meeting uh, recently went extremely well and, uh, and, and uh, very productive. And as a result of all those uh, arrangements that uh, we've been able to, to achieve, uh, so this uh, week uh, on Tuesday, as I have mentioned in my remarks, uh, so um, the uh, uh, economic working group meeting uh, within the framework of the trilateral uh, format um, uh, held its first uh, meeting, very promising, uh, I would say, uh, and uh, so many opportunities to explore. Uh, so the uh, all uh, parties involved uh, so have been discussing, and uh, uh, with uh, and with regard to uh, <clears throat> to the linkage, uh, uh, with regard to the C five plus one format, uh, indeed uh, Afghanistan uh, is a high is is a hot topic uh, uh, within the framework of C five plus one. Uh, so uh, every single time uh, when uh, the leaders. Uh, are gathering, so we, we are uh, focusing on, on the security issues uh, and touching upon uh, the uh, Afga uh, Afghanistan conciliation process as well. And in this regard, I think uh, these two formats uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, may have a future in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, working uh, uh, together. Uh, and uh, uh, at this point, I uh, just wanted to, to uh, stress uh, on another format is that uh, we, I mean, the Uzbekistan government and its leadership uh, are in favor of, uh, and I'm talking about TIFA, Trade uh, and Investment uh, Framework Agreement uh, that has been signed several years ago. And now we are very much looking for, forward to, to uh, joining Afghanistan uh, to, to this uh, format and actually being a part of uh, the economic dimension of uh, the C5 plus one uh, 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 platform has uh, actually uh, so being a part uh, of this uh, TIFA format. And hopefully, uh, so uh, this year um, uh, during the uh, summit of, uh, of, of the uh, TIF, uh, TIFA ministerial, we'll be able to achieve uh, compromise and uh, Afghanistan finally will be, uh, will be the member of this uh, format. So that's the way how we are um, uh, envisioning the uh, involvement of uh, Afghanistan into C5 plus one format. Uh, Scott, I want to say a word uh, that uh, we support uh, uh, what the ambassador of Uzbekistan has said, and we favor an ever a stronger relationship uh, between uh, C5 uh, and uh, Afghanistan uh, and uh, the, in the C5 plus one format, uh, one being the United States. Uh, and uh, in, in fact, when uh, Mr. Boron and I traveled to Uzbekistan, uh, we had a session with the C5 uh, ministers uh, focused on Afghan peace and preparing uh, for uh, uh, that peace should it happen. Uh, as I said, challenges are obviously still there, uh, what the implications could be uh, in terms of regional development, trade, and what the United States is prepared to do to help. Uh, we think that's a, an important format and an increased uh, cooperation and integration of Afghanistan with it 
uh, we believe is an important objective and we, we, we applaud what the, the uh, Ambassador of Uzbekistan said. Thank you very much. Let me just turn briefly to Ambassador Kazakhanov and then to you, Ambassador Rahmani, about this issue in terms of integrating Afghanistan into the C5 plus one or other regional institutions. Yeah, uh, Scott, thank you very much. Uh, I mentioned in my introductory remarks that we welcome uh, Afghanistan's uh, full membership at the trade uh, and investment framework agreement uh, that exists between uh, Central Asia and the United States. Uh, we think uh, that uh, C5 plus one uh, format that has been uh, initially proposed by Kazakhstan plays an important role uh, in the region. and. Uh, we think that uh, great involvement of Afghanistan into this uh, platform uh, would be very instrumental and uh, uh, Afghanistan uh, uh, remains to be one of the important topics of the discussions at the uh, C5 plus one uh, meetings at the ministerial level. And uh, so we're looking forward to welcome Afghanistan and uh, that would be my answer. Thank you, Ambassador Rahmani. Thank your view? you. Sure. Uh, I, I just want to add a few additional points to what has been already said about this and the, uh, addressing the incentives, why, why these mechanisms uh, should be supported and improved. Number one, Afghanistan is the shortest path connecting Central Asia and South Asia. Uh, there is an abundance of energy resources in Central Asia that South Asia is really very much in need. Um, likewise, there is uh, certain products that, um, like cotton that Central Asia could export to South Asia and South Asia in turn can export uh, one of their uh, prominent products uh, or the top uh, uh, products, which is garments which is very much shared among the region and there is abundant opportunities as such that uh, uh, should there be mechanisms uh, uh, more for cooperation and connectivity, then uh, all of these could service and benefit all of us. In terms of the C plus five, uh, 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 C five plus one, uh, we are looking forward to join to be joining this platform because this uh, would contribute in terms of uh, <laughs> coordination uh, towards peace and stability in the region, for security in the region, as well as uh, economic development. Uh, some practical suggestions in terms of how we could uh, uh, take this uh, uh, into action would be a lot of the American companies uh, over the past few years have taken lots of interest and have uh, started their businesses in Uzbekistan. Uh, with the help of DFC, and thanks to Ambassador Khalilzad and the trip that they made uh, to the region, we think that it is not too difficult to expand their branches to Afghanistan. That way, this these would uh, plant the seeds of cooperation. We would put our labor and, and the, and the uh, youth a young population of Afghanistan into work and that would contribute in turn into stability and economic development. Um, I believe that the investment in infrastructure is key to peace and stability in Afghanistan and in the region. Why is that? Because uh, infrastructure would uh, bring connectivity to the region. Connectivity will bring people together, and that's what builds trust. Without trust, we can't have peace, within, whether it is within the nation or outside and abroad. So I think that this equation of being least integrated region needs to be uh, inverted and reversed in order mm -hmm. for all of us to reach the uh, potentials that we have and we all deserve. Thank you very much for that. Let me take another question from the audience. And this is from Jennifer Grossman. And she says, how can women in Afghanistan and Central Asia be supported in peace building and in economic development? So let me go back to you, Ambassador Rahmani. Obviously, women's rights is a key concern of 
many Afghans uh, in negotiations with the Taliban. So how do you see that playing out and what can be done to better empower women and include women in the peace process? Well, my first reaction is how can you have peace and development without incorporating full participation of women? Peace and development are simply not going to uh, uh, take place and descend in Afghanistan and in the region unless you utilize all the human capacity uh, and the potential that the country has. And neglecting half of its resources, of course, is not going to get us anywhere. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the, how we could practically put that into action, uh, the uh, initiatives like Ambassador Bakov uh, referred to in terms of exchanges, capacity building, providing opportunities for the women entrepreneurs, for women businesses uh, to be part of it is, is, of, um, is of immense importance. Another very important aspect, as we are at the brink of this unprecedented opportunity for peace, is that we need to ensure two very important aspects uh, of uh, uh, few, uh, for a durable and sustainable peace to be very well uh, elaborated in, in this process. One, of course, is uh, we have heard a lot about the meaningful, but I would say substantive participation of women. Women should not be an issue on the table, but they should be a party at the table in order to make sure that uh, we would achieve sustainable and durable peace. Number two is economic development must be uh, a very essential part of uh, moving forward and uh, thinking about the future of Afghanistan, not only between the Islamic government of Afghanistan and the Taliban that they're negotiating, but also an, uh, something that our partners who have helped us so significantly over the past two decades, and we are extremely grateful for that, as well as the neighbors who will be and, uh, playing a role and have played a major role, uh, need to concentrate on what is our agenda of breaking from this cycle of conflict. And that is true development, that is true economic integration. Because other than that, we are not living in a world that we can insulate and isolate ourselves. Therefore, we need to all be invested and look into creative ways. We are countries in the region with very young population. We need to invest in them and make sure that we provide them the opportunities that they deserve. And women are a very integral and fundamental part of this. Uh, I don't, uh, of course, I, I understand why this question should be first directed to me, but I think I need all the other panelists to be talking more than I do about this in order for this to really materialize. Thank you. Thank you. It's a good point. Well, let me give Ambassador Kazakhanov a chance uh, to elaborate on that since he mentioned this topic a bit. In his well, Scott, thank you very much. I absolutely agree with uh, uh, Ambassador of Afghanistan that uh, women empowerment is uh, absolutely important issue. I mentioned in my remarks in the beginning that uh, two years ago in September 2018, Kazakhstan initiated the regional conference on empowerment of women in Afghanistan. So we hosted a high-level delegation from Afghanistan at the ministerial level. There were uh, women um, uh, represented from all capitals of Central Asia. And uh, the main topic was their uh, entrepreneurship, uh, exchange of uh, experience and knowledges. How uh, women from all the countries of Central Asia and Afghanistan can support each other and help each other to... Uh, promote education, etc. So if you go into the um, cities of Kazakhstan, you will find hundreds of Afghanistan students studying in Kazakhstan and uh, a lot of uh, girls uh, among them. And uh, I mentioned that uh, European Union, for example, has allocated uh, two point two and a half million dollars for uh, the special program of girls' vocational education. Uh, and uh, we are... Uh, about to impl start implementing this this project and i also encourage very much encourage our us partners to uh, to look into the uh, uh, women entrepreneurship and uh, empowerment of women of afghanistan through the lenses of women global development and prosperity prosperity initiative 
And uh, much uh, could be learned from the experience of uh, Central Asian countries, first and foremost, Kazakhstan, uh, where we have uh, quite a sensible, a sizable number of women in the parliament. We have uh, women in the government and, and we have a, a, a special entities and bodies uh, bringing together women entrepreneurs uh, throughout the country. And I think uh, the, the sky is the limit and uh, we, we are ready uh, to work hand in hand with our US partners in this direction. Thank you. Thank you very much. We just have a minute remaining in the session and I want to ask a question from Pamela Constable of the Washington Post. She asks it to Ambassador Khalilzad, uh, and that is, what do you see looking forward are the greatest regional challenges to concluding a peace agreement? Oh. Oh, I think the biggest challenge is, is to uh, decrease the prospects or the potential for spoiling behavior uh, because of uh, unrelated problems of Afghanistan. Uh, and one has to do with our relations with Iran, uh, that Iran uh, has not been as supportive as it should be uh, uh, in uh, uh, the effort uh, to get to inter-Afghan negotiations and uh, to an Afghan settlement largely because of the, uh, the state of our relationship with them and their recommendations. Uh, if I take seriously what the Deputy Minister, uh, Foreign Minister of Iran said in Kabul uh, a, a few days ago, was he doesn't uh, like the peace process uh, and he doesn't like the U.S. military presence in Afghanistan, which, which means a, a formula that they prefer is that the U.S. abandons Afghanistan without a peace process, which means war. So uh, uh, that's one. Two, I worry also whether uh, other differences or rivalries, whether it's in the Gulf or in South Asia, uh, could uh, also uh, pose a, a challenge uh, with regard to the regional support for a peace process. Uh, we have worked very hard uh, 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 with our European allies, uh, with Russia, with China, we have the format of uh, the trilateral with Russia and China in support of the peace process. Uh, we have uh, worked hard with India and Pakistan in support of the peace process and support and the government of Afghanistan's initiative recently to host a regional meeting that brought India and Pakistan together uh, in support of peace. And we have worked also uh, with our Gulf friends uh, all of whom uh, we uh, hope will be supportive. Uh, I think for peace to, uh, to be achieved and be sustained, there is a need for broad uh, and participation uh, in Afghanistan in the peace process and support for it, and including women. Uh, I, 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 I'm very proud of uh, uh, Ambassador Rahmani. She is a, 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 an example of what uh, Afghan women have the potential to do and the achievements that they have had uh, and our role in that, uh, in that process, including uh, starting with the constitution where we supported the idea of a 25% representation uh, in, uh, of women at the minimum in Afghan parliament. And uh, I have to say that uh, also the Iraqis then uh, imitated Afghanistan and put the same thing in their constitution. So, uh, and I am uh, insisting uh, on behalf of the United States that women be at the table uh, 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 during negotiations, but at the same time, it, it, it is very important for peace to be achieved and sustained that the region also is positively engaged. And, and, and uh, we have even agreed to sit in, in meetings, uh, focus on Afghanistan with Iran, because we would like Iran also to be supportive. So uh, uh, Pamela, who knows Afghanistan well, has, has asked a great question. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Now let me turn to Ambassador Rahmani for the last word. What are your comments on regional challenges for Afghanistan's future and future peace? Thank you, Scott. I like to uh, end on a positive note and not focus on challenges, but opportunities. 
uh, from the region. And having said that, I would like to again reiterate what uh, I said at the end of my remarks. Uh, let's get to work. Let's work together. Let's break this cycle and loop of let's wait and see how the politics of the region will turn in Afghanistan and uh, continue to be in this wait and see mode and instead break it for once and, and get to work take a bit of risk, invest in the things that we haven't done in, in the past uh, uh, decades and see how it goes. We have already tested the wait and see for too long. I think it's time to get uh, to, to do it differently. I would also say that this is the same idea about the women participation. We, we had it for too long without them. It is better now to give them a chance. So let's put all our forces together and focus on positive things, focus on what we have done and build on it and focus on economic development for the region. That is the route that will lead us to peace, not uh, the one that is that is focused and, and uh, co continuously concentrating in this vortex of what is going to happen and how uh, we can be risk averse because we cannot. The, the, today's world is completely at a different stage that we cannot just isolate and isolate ourselves. Therefore, uh, we can take this, the bold steps of getting practical and working on regional economic cooperation. That's the road to peace for Afghanistan and for the region. I thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for ending on a positive note. And as I mentioned at the outset, we wanted to have this format of a conversation, these participants, because there is good news and there is support coming from the Central Asia region for Afghanistan. So let me have Ambassador Rahmani's positive words be the conclusion of this. Let me thank the speakers for their time and for their efforts to support a peaceful resolution of the Afghan conflict. And let me thank all of you that are watching on YouTube, on Twitter, and have participated uh, by asking questions and, and posting tweets. We hope to have more of these conversations again, and we'll see you then.